Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, everyone here, attended here and spending uh, 15 minutes of your time and learning new things. Thank you also, uh, Vox uh, Luxembourg. It's my first time, I mean, yeah, my first time in this, the city of Luxembourg. Um, I've seen a lot of good things here and uh, for sure I'll be coming back here. So uh, this is going to be quick and this topic is about you know, uh, JavaScript bundlers. So these are two bundlers, which is written in, in Ross. So, uh, yeah, a little bit about me. I'm Devlin in Duldulao. I'm currently living in, and working in Oslo, Norway for four years, originally from Manila, Philippines. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I've written uh, some books. So my first book, the ASP.NET Core with Vue.js, my second book, which is uh, co-written it, Practical Enterprise React, and my latest book, which is launched um, uh, last October, which is uh, Spring Boot and Angular. So let's move on. This is a car design that shows you different pieces uh, that were put together to build this car, right? And similarly, in, in software applications, these pieces are called modules. You can also say that in, for example, in you know, who's React developers here, or is any any front end? So this is just a React components, you know, are the building blocks of a React uh, application, and then creating modules to build, you know, a software or a car, gives us benefits like isolation. So it allows people to work individually on the car or the application without delaying someone. Composability, right, also part of uh, benefits. So clear boundaries for each individual component, and they're able to compose each piece together to create fully functioning feature. Another one, reusability. So, uh, you know, re reusability can reuse uh, same components, you know, for, for, for example, uh, in this car would be the wiper, the wheels, seats, etc. cetera. Uh, organizations. So the, the effect of each individual piece having clear boundaries for how they interact with each other gives us this organization. So how do we modularize our code before in the front end? So first is we have this ify. Um, ify is immediately invoke function expression. So it mimics a module scope, can hide variables, self-contained, etc. So ify help us create module patterns back in the days, and it looks like this. So in this example, the x variable is, is, is not visible outside of the if, so trying to log it out outside of the, the if results in a reference error. Next, common JS, built for Node.js originally and synchronous. And then we also have this AMD, asynchronous module definition, an example of AMD is require.js, which is a library. So AMD fixes dependency, resolution, and pollution of the global scope. And we use CommonJS and, and AMD to share libraries through NPM packages. So how do we use CommonJS in the browser if it's built for Node.js and Synchronous? So we have this uh, Browserify. So Browserify is made to support CommonJS in the browsers. It is a module bundler you know, that reads all requires and module exports and bundles all JavaScript files into one single JavaScript file. Most of the time, you'll see that bundle.js. You know, if you look into the, the this folder after uh, building your, your application. So Browserify needs Gulp and Grant as task runners, though. So after. <coughs> Browserify, we have this Webpack. So Webpack is a module bundler that can do things more than what Browserify can do, such as detect the code. You don't, you know, you don't, you don't use to exclude it while combining files, uh, serialize the code and load it only when it's necessary. You know, those, those three shaking, uh, and then monitor for file alterations, transpile code to different versions of JavaScript. And you know, it can concatenate multiple files together into a single bundle for, for the browser. So typical bundler. The problem is that this process becomes increasingly slow as the app adds more code or is 
you know, when it's growing. If you have experience like really huge um, Angular application or React application or Vue.js application before, um, you'll notice that in order to change some lines of codes or, or text or color, it takes a few seconds before you can see the changes you made in the screen. So front-end developer, right, change something, you, you know, you're, you're expecting uh, the background changes or the text changes, and you're expecting it really quick, so you would be like really productive. But what if it takes you seven seconds before you can see it? Some developers would, you know, it, it, depends, it depends on the machine, by the way. It depends on uh, what type of machine you're using, how, how good the machine is. But the point here is, uh, if it's too long, the tendency of developers would check their phones. And if, worse is if there's notification, you'll be like taken away now. You lose gonna, you're going to lose your, your concentration instead of building the, the application. Now you're you know, in TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, right? That's bad. So now we have this uh, Turbo Pack written in Rust by the creators of Webpack and Next.js at Vercel. So Turbo Pack delivers a swift and, and versatile uh, development experiences for applications of any scale. So meaning any, any scale, it, it doesn't matter how big the application is or how, how big is the, the code base. Um, and thanks to its progressive behavior and you know, adjustable packaging approaches. But the question is, why Turbo Pack? Right? Um, some features of, Tur of Turbo Pack, it knows which, uh, which files to rerun. It's smart enough to, to know which files to rerun. Um, it supports TypeScript, you know, JSX also, WebAssembly out of the box, and more. Another one, faster HMR. So this is HMR is the hat module replacement uh, that we often, you know, use when, when developing or writing changes. When you hit the, the, the command S or the control S so to save the file, you should see the changes right in the screen right away. So this, that's called uh, hat module replacement. It gives you these uh, changes so you can see in the screen if you're changing it right or not. What else? Support for Rack server components. So Rack server components, this is our Rack components that you can run in the server. So this is fairly new and in Rack 18, which is really good. So the point here is you don't need to write REST API anymore because the component itself, the Rack component itself can query from the, da from the database using an ORM. So that's, that's ve very, you know, uh, very new, not new, not so new, but really good experience when you're writing application. No REST API components querying from the database. Imagine that, just like PHP before, right? <laughs> so, uh, what else? Um, build and optimize for multiple environments together. You know, browser, uh, browser for server, edge, uh, server-side rendering, Rack server components. And then this Turbo Pack um, as support for Next.js. And Vercel is planning to use Turbo Pack to create a remote cache that would be that would have developers uh, have this single source of you know cache and distribute across team. So remote cache is a good idea also. So why replace Webpack? Webpack was created ten years ago. Uh, it re retains its dated uh, architecture despite web development significant you know growth. Um, Webpack's architecture isn't suited for large scale incremental builds and, it, and it's difficult to fix due to numerous uh, dependent plugins. Changing Webpack's architecture while maintaining backwards compatibility is challenging as it risks breaking users' existing implementations. Another problem, cache invalidation is often too, too sensitive, causing extensive rebuilding when small changes are made. So this is, you know, keeps on rebuilding the, the, uh, the application, even you just change a small thing. So it's, it's taking a lot of time. And in, in incremental builds, cache lookup helps you know, skip redundant work. But with, with having many, many modules, it can lead to considerable uh, cache lookup costs, very costly. 
So let's go to TurboPax architecture. What is the architecture? So Vercel created a layering system using Rust as the base. Rust offers good things, parallelism, which is good, right? More control over memory allocation without it being as painful as C++, and uh, security, but it's more challenging to, to write the Java, than JavaScript. So to encourage plugin development, Vercel supports both JavaScript and Rust for plugin interfaces, and then developers can start with JavaScript and then port it in Rust afterward. And you have this Turbo Engine, a core engine for, for common tasks like caching, invalidation, and incremental builds. Vercel is using SWC right there, here, as, uh, as a modern transpiler built in, in, in Rust that replaces Babel, which is uh, 20 times faster than, than Babel. So uh, another one here. The, the Turbo Pack itself, it's a, a bundler handling CSS, static assets, WASM, images, uh, fonts, and, and more leveraging SWC. And then you have this Next.js and other frameworks can use Turbo Pack as bundler. But right now, Next.js uh, Turbo Pack supports Next.js, uh, but the plan is to support also some JavaScript frameworks and library. So why Turbo Pack is so fast? TurboPack's impressive speed is attributed to its incremental computation engine. So a typical bundler process, so the process involves reading files here, reading files, bundling them together, concatenating them, and then performing um, multiple tasks. However, TurboPack takes a different approach by, by keeping track of the, the inputs and outputs of each function, so it, it memorizes it or remembers it. So during the first run, it reads, you know, it reads, it, it bundles, so first run reads, bundles, concatenate uh, files, and then remembers all outputs, right? On the second run, or subsequent runs, sorry, subsequent runs, uh, if a specific file, such as SDK, uh, TS is modified, TurboPack only needs to, to redo the steps related to that file. So look at here. And it doesn't need to read or bundle the unchanged files like API.ts. And this incremental computation and, and the native speed of Rust are the responsible for, for TurboPack's speed performance. So interestingly, the TurboPack engine itself is, is not uh, involved in the bundling process. Its main function is to save the results of the functions. So it's, it does remember remembers things. Uh, getting started with Turbo Pack. So in Next.js, just run this, this command. It will um, uh, create a Next.js uh, boilerplate. And if you take a look at the script, npm script here, the next dev has a flag dash dash turbo, meaning, meaning it's going to use the Turbo Pack bundler. Aside from that, you won't see Turbo Pack, you know, like a configuration file or whatever. Now, let's go to RS Pack. So ByteDance and Valor Software introduced RSPAC to the open source community. And if you don't know ByteDance, it's responsible for, it's a tech giant behind popular platforms such as TikTok. So RSPAC is a fast Rust-based bundler, same as TurboPack. You have this fast startup, uh, Lightning, HMR. But the difference is Webpack compatible. So if you know Webpack, how to configure Webpack, you can bring that skills and then use RSPAC, bring it there. Batteries included, such as you know, TypeScript support, JSX support, production optimizations, and another uh, difference between uh, TurboPack and RSPAC is frame, this is framework agnostic, agnostic, meaning it works in, in Vue.js, it's built React. You can, you, you can use it to, to those uh, top frame, JavaScript frameworks. Getting started with RSPAC, npm create RSPAC at latest, and you can see the dev there is using RSPAC command and serve. And I mentioned it uh, has this compatibility with Webpack, and here's the RS, uh, RSPAC config. You can see that it has this similar approach with Webpack. So uh, here, a stable and battle-tested bundler that I could Highly recommend is Vit. This is by default it's using by uh, React now, create React app. A lot of frameworks are using this by default. Um, Angular is planning to 
I think they have support for this now. So Vit is, is more stable and battle-tested bundler, but not written in, in Rust, but written in, in, in Go language. And it's awesome. It's really fast also. So if you're going to ask me uh, which, which one to, to pick, I would use Vit. So summary, here it is. Um, and I would like to thank everyone for coming here. Resources. Here's the resources, the links, and yes, merci beaucoup. <laughs> so, if you have questions, just just approach me, or oh yes, uh, one second. Thank you for your talk. Uh, I got distracted at the end. Is Vit also a bundler, like yes, uh, the other yes, ones? Yes, it's also and, a bundler. And are they based on the two other ones? Or? Uh, no, it's a separate thing. Because my main topic is new bundlers written in Rust. But I, I, I didn't include Vit there in the beginning, since Vit is, is not written in Rust. It's written in, in Go language. Ah, OK. OK, thank you mm, so But much. it's also fast. Oh, OK, thank you. Mm. Anyone? Any more questions? No. Or for front end or going once, going twice? Thank you again for coming here. <laughs>